Okay, good morning, everybody. This is the July 12th, 2022 meeting of the Dunn County Planning Resource and Development Committee. A call being to order. Looks like we have all except one committee member present right now. Um, so we have a quorum. Uh, uh, let's start with approval of the minutes from the June 28th meeting. Anyone care to make a motion? I'll move approval, Mr. Chairman. Supervisor Moorhead, Supervisor Bjork, second or seconds. Any discussion, corrections? Okay. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, say no. Uh, motion carries. Do we have any public comments? You know of? Okay. And we do not have a public hearing. So, uh, if it's okay with the committee. We have two items, one of which at least there's a someone from the public here to to uh, sit in on. And uh, if it's okay with the committee, uh, I would suggest that we move items eight, A and B up to uh, after number five for purposes of facilitating the, the oh. rest of the meeting. <laughs> Anybody object? Okay. Then we'll go out to uh, 8A, the variance request from Town of Springbrook. Mr. Carlson. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, so I'll start off here with my staff report. Uh, this is a variance request from Ken and Valerine Johnson. They live um, out on County Highway C in the town of Elk Mound. They currently own lot one of CSM number 4615. It's located in the southwest of the southeast of section 21, 2711 town of Spring Brook. It's 5.12 acres. <clears throat> the current property is unzoned um, and they are looking, uh, they've applied for a variance to create a lot that will be served by an access easement that doesn't meet the minimum required width of 66 feet listed in section 16.431a of our county land division ordinance. Let me jump down here to page 34. So this is an existing certified survey map. They own lot one right here. You can see a lot of resident or a lot of agricultural type buildings on here. So again, the property is unzoned. They want to divide the existing house, garage, well, and septic from the remainder of the farm buildings on the property. So I'll jump up to page 33 here. Um, so here's an air photo. You can see all the buildings here mm -hmm. and their location. So they want to divide, again, the house, the well, septic, and garage from the remainder of the farm buildings. Um, to do that, a new two-lot CSM that meets the requirements of Chapter 16 is going to be required. Um, section 16.431A of the ordinance states, for newly created land divisions, right-of-way width shall be at least 66 feet. So they are, the surveyor is proposing an access easement. Let me bring that up to serve. So here is the proposed certified survey map of that existing lot. They're gonna turn it into lots three and four. And if I zoom in a little closer here, so you can see what they're, they're attempting to do with the house, the well, the septic, there's a garage here. Um, you may ask, you know, this line, does it meet setbacks? We're in the town of Springbrook. It's an unzoned town, so there is no, no zoning setbacks involved. Um, so right now the line's going to go up, kind of hug around these buildings, come back up, lop off about a 1.31 acre parcel. There's an existing driveway here. This is a county highway. There's an existing driveway right where my hand is running up here. Um, so they're proposing an access easement of 33 feet wide that goes back 120 feet. Um, they can't get 66 in there, they'd be into the barn. Does everybody see that? And the driveway is maybe only 15 feet wide, something like that, that's graveled. So, I mean, they're not, typically these access easements, they're, the required width is 66 feet, but the improved surface they're using is much less than that. It's just the width is there in case they would ever want to turn it into a town road, do further development in the future. Um, so this is what they're proposing. Um, another option, let me just bring up the photo again. Another option would be to request a new driveway, another driveway. Um, so if everybody can see this here, here's the driveway coming in and it comes in 
to the home right here. Um, the well and the septic are right in here where my hand is. So for them to put another driveway here wouldn't be feasible. Plus, you know, the separation between the two on a county highway is not good. Um, they've already talked with the highway commissioner, Dustin Bender, and he's okay um, allowing this to be a shared stay as one driveway, be one driveway, but be a shared use. Um, so everything is fine from the county highway department on that. And so if we go back to the survey map, this is why we're here, this red easement, right? It's less than 66 feet wide. So section 16.83 of the land division ordinance allows um, the landowner to request a variance. So that's that's what we have before us this morning. Um, the existing structures, as I stated, in relation to the drive, we do not allow for 66 foot wide access easement to be created. Under our current ordinance standards, this proposed lot three could never be further divided in the future. You know, that's one thing we're looking at. We've got an easement coming into lot three. What happens if they divide it down the road? Now we've got more people using a substandard easement. So lot three can't be further subdivided. It's already just over one acre. Um, I suppose lot four could be subdivided. I, you know, with all the structures that are there, I think it's probably highly unlikely. Um, and there's little potential for this easement to connect with future or existing land divisions. I mean, if somebody's gonna divide the property behind here, number one, it's a different landowner. Um, and they certainly, you know, can't get an easement to wiggle in between the barn and the shed and come between these grain bins. They're going to come in from a different way. So I guess the point I'm trying to stress is this easement is really not going to be used for any other divisions out here that I see um, has little potential for that. And again, there's no objection from the Dunn County Highway Department for the continued use of the shared driveway as a single access point to the county highway. So any questions on on this layout here that you have before you. So the Johnsons own lot three? The Johnsons own lot three? They own, well, lot, lot three and four are being proposed. They're not existing right now. They own, let me bring up the other certified survey map. The Johnsons right now own lot one of this existing certified survey map, and they're wishing to divide it into lots three and four, two new lots. And then lot one and two go away? Lot two remains, Okay, yeah. but lot one gets superseded. Okay. It now becomes known as lots three and four of a newly recorded CSM. It'll be given a new number on recording. So the, jo the Johnsons will continue to own the lot three, the new lot three, and they will sell lot four. I, let me open up the staff report. Um, hang on. So this is the written brief um, that accompanied the variance oh, application. So I'll just read this quick. Uh, landowner Kenneth Johnson is applying for a variance to relax the requirement of the minimum width of 66 feet for a private access easement. The applicant desires to sell an existing farmhouse and garage to his nephew. The farmhouse is served by an existing driveway, which also serves existing farm buildings. See the proposed CSM located on the site. For practical and economical purposes, both Mr. Johnson and his nephew would like to continue to use the existing driveway. A conversation with Mr. Bender at Dunn County Highway uh, yielded no objections for the continued use. Creating a 33 foot wide access easement as opposed to 66 feet creates no encroachments with existing farm buildings and follows the location of the existing driveway surface. For this reason, the applicant is respect, respectfully requesting their variance be granted. So uh, the nephew is going to be purchasing the the home and garage. Sure. Any questions from the community? So, one more yeah. a question. Because that lot four is, or whatever, is 1.3 acres. Now, because uh, Springbrook is unzoned, can they go down to a smaller than one acre per building? Or is that a, like a county wide? Well, 
let's just say Springbrook allows for less than an acre. Dunn County doesn't, though. In our land, our land division ordinance would catch that. Okay. So with respect to minimum lot size in the land division ordinance, we default to the zoning ordinance if you're in a zoned township. Right. If you're in an unzoned town, then we set the minimum at one or 43,560, okay. which is one acre. So they so, couldn't go below an acre per county ordinance. Even though that Springbrook would allow it, but it would not go through because of our... You have to comply. Division. When two ordinances are in conflict with each other, the more restrictive governs. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So just following up or finishing my staff report, um, the granting of a variance request will su subscribe or secure substantially the purposes and intent of Chapter 16. So based on the above analysis and variance requirements, the ENS department recommends approval of this variance request. We just think it's it's a good fit for, for what's being proposed. We don't see it creating any problems or uh, a detriment to the public. So that concludes my staff report. Um, Mr. Eric Kanoff is here. He is the surveyor that prepared the certified survey map. He's acting on on um, behalf of the applicant, and he can certainly answer any questions that you might have. Uh, do we have any questions for? Uh, I have a question for Tom, or actually okay. a comment. Do you have any comments you want to make? Um, not at this time. I think uh, Tom's okay. done an adequate job of explaining the situation. Okay, I think we're fine then. Uh, go ahead. Uh, thank you, uh, Tom. And, uh, you know, as we, I agree, first off, but as we look at this, uh, this actually could, the 3.8 acre lot could be split up. You know, if someone really wants to do it, a shed's not going to get in their way. Now you tear down a shed and you have three lots. That's just something to consider in the future because a, a shed's there doesn't mean a thing. Or a crib, you just plow it down and you build three houses. So that is a possibility uh, that we should consider a, as a as a committee. Um, but uh, no, I, I think it's perfectly fine, but just something to think about in the future. Okay, any other questions? <laughs> any questions of the surveyor? Okay. Um, is there a motion one way or the other to uh, accept the variance request? I move to accept the variance request, as Tom explained. I'll second that, Mr. Chairman. We have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say no. Motion carries. Thanks. Thanks. Um, and the second one, item B, Tom. Okay. So this is another variance request. Um, it's from a Mr. Ashley Anderson. Uh, he currently owns lots five and six, Platt of Lakehurst, located in Government Lot 2, Section 29, Town 29 North Range 12 West Town Attainer. Um, when we lump both those lots together, there's roughly half of an acre there combined. The two lots are currently zoned R1, and Mr. Anderson is looking for a variance to create a lot which does not meet the requirement of 30,000 square feet of contiguous buildable area required by section 16.46 sub six of the Dunn County Land Division Ordinance. So what he would like to do, um, again, he owns lots five and six of this really old plat. Let me bring this up for you. The plat was recorded in 1929. Oops. So it's fairly old. Um, we all know where Jake sits on the on the river here. So it's right across the river from Jake's, across the bridge. He owns lots five and six right here um, on this plat. Um, again, it was recorded in November of 1929. Uh, the lots are currently zoned R1. Mr. Anderson would like to consolidate both of those lots into one new lot so that future structures can be placed on the property that don't hinder him as far as setbacks go. Right now, setbacks are measured from each one of those lot lines. If he wants to build right in the middle, straddling the common line between five and six, he can't meet setbacks. Um, so that's his whole impetus for doing this. Um, we've got a preliminary certified survey. Let me just show you the air photo here so we can see where we're at. So here's the bridge um, coming across, and this is the parcel right here. Right now, it's, it's vacant. There is a well on the property. Um, but there are no other structures. So he has hired a surveyor 
a surveyor has put together a preliminary certified survey map. So you can see lots five and six being combined. There's the location of the well. A portion of this property is located within the 100 year floodplain of Lake Tainer. There's no map wetlands on the property. A small portion of the property near the shoreline contains slopes of 20% or greater. However, these slopes would fall within the 75 foot building setback line. So there's really nothing um, to worry about from that perspective. Um, so by combining these two lots, again, a certified survey map is required that has to meet all the requirements of chapter 16. And as you're aware, our ordinance requires 30,000 square feet of contiguous buildable area on this parcel. Um, right now, when we run the numbers, factoring in the setbacks, shoreland setbacks, we've got about 8,800 square feet, which is considerably short of what's required. So again, um, our ordinance allows for a variance request, which Mr. Anderson has done. Um, I received that request from him. Um, the purpose of the contiguous buildable area standard is to ensure there is adequate area for building use and sufficient area suitable for the entire on-site wastewater treatment system and its replacement. So a well does exist on the property and according to Mr. Anderson, it's in working condition. There's currently no septic in place. However, a mound type system has been designed for this property. Um, zoning has, has looked at those preliminary designs and I can tell you it's out near 800th Avenue on that end of, of the two lots. If the proposed system should fail, its replacement could be constructed in the same location. Um, so it is a mound system that they're proposing. And again, if that would fail, the material could be removed and rebuilt in its same location. So ENS staff have determined that the relationship between the existing well and the proposed septic system will allow for adequate area in which to construct a residential type structure on the lot, even though we're not meeting the 30,000 square foot standard. Um, if the variance is not approved, there is a possibility that each of the existing non-conforming lots could be developed for residential purposes. So combining them into one new lot would eliminate that possibility. May I, Mr. Chairman? Uh, Tom, I, I was just about to ask you to explain um, your your uh, comment under number two, that consolidation of the two lots will actually reduce overcrowding. I, I was not sure that I understood that. And that, yeah. And that's what you're suggesting here. Yes, yeah, so under the variance requirements, it talks about um, well-planned, reducing overcrowding and undue congestion of population. So right now these lots exist as two separate platted lots. Mr. Anderson could sell me one of them this afternoon and I could come in conceivably um, if I could get, you know, a, a, some type of a septic system on there and a very small structure. It, I'm not saying it would happen, but it's, it's it a could. possibility. We could end up with two structures <laughs> there, two septics, two wells. Um, we have to remember these lots were created a long time ago before right. ordinances were in place. Um, so what he's looking at doing is actually not a land division, but a land consolidation. And by consolidating them, even if we don't take off the setbacks, and that was in my comments here coming up too, he's only got 21,600 square feet roughly of land total. And that's before we take off the setbacks. He, he doesn't even meet the requirement before the setbacks are taken out. So it, it, it's really a hardship for him. He'd have to purchase additional land to meet that requirement. And again, these were legally created lots at the time. So that's where my comment was headed to, that we're okay. actually reducing congestion and, and undue concentration of population. So if I may, so because they were created before, they don't come under our subdivision ordinance, so they could do, okay, then I get it. Thank you. As yeah. long as setbacks were met and separation between well and septic, it's possible. Um, so I'm not going to go through all the variant standards that was in your packet. Um, we did touch on the one uh, Supervisor Morehouse brought up. So thank you for that. Um, so at the end of the day, when staff have, have has reviewed this and, and looked at all the circumstances involved, um, we believe um, that consolidation of the two existing lots to allow for one new residence and associated improvements is consistent um, with the purpose and intent of the ordinance. So we're recommending approval. Uh, Mr. Anderson is here. If you have any questions for him, um, I just want to make sure I'm covering everything in the packet. 
Um, this was his written brief that he provided. Uh, it was in your packet. I'll just read it quick. So enforcement of the county land division ordinance would result in an unnecessary hardship because the lots are not big enough to satisfy the 30,000 square foot requirement. Um, unique characteristics of the property prevent compliance with the ordinance because they are small lake lots and not typical residential lots. Granting this variance would not harm the public interest because there are other lots in the area that have structures, wells, and septic systems that do not meet the 30,000 square foot minimum. There is an existing well located on the property. And I think that covers everything that was in the packet. Um, so again, that concludes my staff report. Okay. Uh, thanks, Tom. Uh, any questions from the committee? Any comments? Okay. Um, anyone care to make a motion? To I'll make that motion that we accept his Var variance request, request, Mr. Anderson. Okay. And I'll second it. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say no. Motion carries. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Okay, back up to regular business. 6A, Register of Deeds Monthly Report. We'll go through the monthly reports, I guess. Just go through them quickly if there are any questions. Any questions for Heather? Just a comment. If there are no questions, you must be doing a good job. <laughs> Always, right? <laughs> Do you want to share any comments? I did actually want to, um, I brought up property fraud alert before, but I don't know if you had a chance to watch that article um, in the news. It was in Florida about property fraud and that particular county had the property fraud alert notification system that we have in place. And it was, it came in handy for that landowner. It helped, it didn't prevent, but it helped provide, um, notice to the individual and they were able to resolve um the problem he was able to get his property back without ha having to go through long court battles and so forth so but we do offer it it's a, a free service to property owners in dunn county um you can call our office you can go online yourself and do it um to sign up it's simply signing up with your name and then you can choose your the, the choose the um the way you want to be notified, whether it's by email or, or phone, phone call, voicemail. Um, yeah. And again, it doesn't prevent, but it does provide notice if there's anything recorded in our office with your name. So I just wanted to remind <clears throat> it's available, it's free, and you, you just Great. hear a lot more about it in, in the news now. So Jeez. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, another good job. Thank you. You're busy, obviously. <laughs> um, and since you brought this up, I do have a question. Is there any way that I think I I think I signed up for this, but of course I can't remember because of course I can't remember. Can I check that? <laughs> yes. I can check that, I can check that for you. Know. Thank you. <laughs> and like you said, uh, you don't have to uh have each property that you own, you just your name and I'll take care of it good enough then. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks, Heather. Survey division. Anything you want to take make note of, Tom? Any questions? I did think of something. Okay. Um, I didn't put it in the report and I apologize, but um, you may have noticed they're constructing a veterans tribute out front. The flagpoles were set last year. Um, the concrete was just poured within the last 10 days or so. Um, we were at, yeah, and the star has been stained on there. We were actually asked by Greg Quinn, veteran service officer, um, to help lay that out. He had some dimensions and stuff, and of course, they needed it laid out on the ground. So our office was involved in laying out um, the circle for the concrete form, and then we actually designed the star that was placed on there and laid out the all the vertices of the star, so it was 
oriented properly. And um, so I just wanted to mention that too. We had a hand, a small hand in that. So great. Planning and zoning. Any questions? And do you have any comments you want to? I don't have anything to add. Okay. Any questions, Van? <clears throat> okay. Just one comment, yeah. maybe. Yes. And uh, Leanne Ralph is a real good, like writer. And I always like you read her articles, and even though I'm here, I always pick up more. But I thought was really, really important when she mentioned section 13.4.0.04 FM on county zoning that no special exception shall be shall violate the spirit or the general intent of the zoning. I think that's so important, even though it's not specifically stated. The general intent and the spirit, I think, should have a lot of weight. Maybe I'm wrong on that, but. And it's nodding her head. She agrees. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a good point, Carrie. And that was a really excellent article that Leanne yeah. wrote about a complicated topic. It was. Mr. Chairman, may I ask a question? Yeah. And I, I, I know that I keep asking this question, but the sort of ETA on the comp plan? So I do not have an ETA. I still have to meet with the towns, and that is going to take some time. Um, but Bob and I, Bob Colson and I, from Cedar Core have been working pretty tightly on that. So okay, good. Moving along. All right. Thank you. Getting there. Thank you. I, I do have a follow-up question. And so again, I think we talked about this before. We haven't seen that document really in any degree of seriousness. So uh I I think we were expecting that before a final draft was presented, we would have a chance to have some I think that's the committee's understanding. I just wanted to, yeah. it sounded like that would maybe was not your intention. So if uh, I mean, we can certainly take a look at it right now. It's just missing things. It's yeah. Could, could you know, just, a, just a reminder that this is done through Cedar core and I just got a copy of that probably okay. last week. Well, <laughs> so. And, so maybe we should put it on the agenda for the next meeting or something, but I think the committee would like to, before it goes out as though it, has been reviewed by us have a chance to review it and then it can go out to the public absolutely okay. i agree okay uh, anything else van okay thank you for those as usual good reports um annual report okay. Oh, Chase, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I always miss something. I was going to not miss anything this week. I was forgetting. Yeah, anything you want to say, Chase? <laughs> I, I'll just make a comment that um, our construction season has been really slow again this spring and summer just due to contractor availability. There's so much work out there for contractors that uh, some of our projects that were extended from last year have yet to be constructed. Um, but we're expecting that's all going to get hit here in the next few months uh we did abandon one mineral storage uh structure it was an earthen structure in the town of dunn here in the last few weeks so uh, but beyond that we're like i said we're expecting all of our construction season to hit all in one time so that'll spread people pretty thin and then uh yeah i guess this last reminder you'll probably see this in the county board packet too but i'm just encouraging your attendance and uh uh, sharing of the information for the uh, field day at the Red Cedar Demo Farm on the 28th. So um, should be a should be a decent event, rain or shine. So any questions, Chase? Okay, thanks. And okay, now uh, the annual report. You want to go through it? Kind of, we'll, we'll go through it by section and see if the committee has any questions or comments on it. Oh, that was a really good job, by the way. Uh, very comprehensive. Thank you. 
So this report will be going to the July County Board. Okay. And we'll be there to answer any questions if the board has them. So. It seems like in the planning and zoning, there's a couple of vacancies. Are they ever going to be filled or just can't find the right candidate or is that money? They're unfunded right now. Okay. So. That's okay. One comment too is the senior planner has never been filled. As far as I know, that was a that was created. Correct. Okay, when we created another part, and we probably should have gotten rid of it a, a while ago. I guess that is a question. I mean, and right now both titles are on your desk is that do you think in going forward that's a viable proposition or do we need to i don't know if i've been here long enough to, to know that i haven't been you. here a full year quite yet okay um but you know i'd, I'd like to kind of understand it a little bit more well we used to have an ass assistant planner too didn't we i think at one point in time but, yeah. I will say that the majority of my work is is zoning right. administration, and I do not get a whole lot of time to do the planning side yeah. of things. Maybe we should talk about that as we're getting budget stuff to together. I don't know. I mean, it's not likely to be funded. This won't be funded. <laughs> I mean, right. Uh, yeah, I think it's... Uh... Well, I mean, the question would be, I guess, um, would would there be would any further assistance help you in planning, or is I mean, I guess the question is, are are we able to are you are we going to be able to meet our planning needs at a sort of a base level going forward, or are we have problems? Right now, it looks very difficult. Um, I'm already struggling finding time to do the planning stuff. I mean, it's just, it's tough. Uh, we have a good staff right now that's very experienced in zoning, but we really don't have anyone that's been a full-time planner, um, or anything like that. It would be extremely helpful, I believe, but, you know, we do have someone retiring this year too. So maybe this is something we want to look at, you know, look at the positions and how they're functioning and job duties and roles. Um, Janet Riedel is retiring at the oh, end of this okay. year. So, I don't know. Need some work, I think. Okay. All right. Any other comments on the annual report? Great job, as always. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot. Okay. Um, Has it come to a point for these positions that if you have to hire it out to a, a Cedar Corps, where does that kind of, you know, you got to go out it, outside all the time uh, as compared to a like in house? The budget cost, too. Yeah. That's to consider, too, obviously. I could speak on that if you like. Sure. So one of the things that I did this year is that I worked some of those funds for our contract services into hiring a seasonal person who had a lot of planning and zoning experience. Um, she worked for our office last year as an LTE, um, but we have her back for four months this year, which is a significantly lower cost than the money we were previously spending for Cedar Core. Um, so that seems to be working out really well. I'm really happy with that. Um, the person in that position, you know, just hit the ground running, picked up where she left off last year. I mean, I would love to see that as something more permanent, but we'll see what happens. That funding for now is still in contract services. Okay. Okay. Let's, uh, let's move on then to the uh, next topic, which is the, uh, update on the Tainter Lake Rehabil Rehabilitation District. Chase. Okay, I'm going to share my screen here. Um, let's see. 
So just a reminder, a few, well, it's probably been a couple months, uh, probably back in April, maybe. Um, some individuals uh, are were in the process and they presented to this committee regarding the proposed Tainer Lake Rehabilitation District and talked about the their goals and their needs for developing such a district. And then a, uh, the process by statute uh, for petitioning the creation of a lake district. This is the general preliminary sketch of the map that was provided. And our office, uh, Land and Water Conservation Division, has been involved in communication with that group of individuals uh, and has um, helped confirm or um, understand the process of, of what needs to be done. They have taken the lead on the development and the petitioning process. We have just been a, a resource for facilitating uh, the next step for the petition. Uh, the Land Information Office with Dunn County has also been involved in the past. They were, um, uh, I guess, contacted by this, these individuals to identify the parcels that would be impacted by their proposed district, um, a list of parcels that were developed, and uh, this map was also developed by our land information office. So um, moving forward, um, the individuals that are petitioning um, have gone through a number of campaigns, and you may have uh, heard the discussion uh, in the last few months, but I've been contacted in the last couple of weeks regarding uh, their status of the petition and they have obtained 500 or excuse me, yes, 540 petitions, uh, which is 58% of the eligible uh, parcels around this potential lake district. There are 921 uh, potential petitions which would make it 100%. In order for a petition to be eligible, um, to be submitted to the county board for request for approval, you would need 51% of the petitioners. So um, it's my understanding that the petitions, uh, the petition will be submitted to the county clerk um, potentially by this Friday, the 15th of July. And with that, um, let me see if I can share another screen with you. Um, With that comes a process and a, a timeline for um, for the, the requirements by statute for the department here to, why can I not, here we go. Um, sorry trying to get this there we go well anyway while that's loading i'm really i'm having the same issues as you tom um there is a timeline that uh, must be followed uh for by the county board so upon the submission of of this uh, petition uh, i've communicated with the county clerk and corporation council interim county manager uh nick and we have um identified uh, the process as to who is going to within our the county's de uh, departments, um, how that might work. The petition will be submitted in, um, I guess, intentions on Friday. Therefore, um, the uh, county clerk will then, uh, it'll be their responsibility to review those petitions for accuracy uh, with um, the parcels that are on the list, making sure that the proper landowners have signed those petitions, and then uh, that process will move forward. And I, Tom, what did you have to do here? You yeah. had to stop share. Okay. Let's try this again. Okay. So this is a, a timeline that we uh, shared with all of you uh, at the time that the, the group presented to the to this committee. I've added some notes based on the uh, ex expectations for when this petition would be submitted. So 
Uh, the county clerk would receive this roughly on Friday, and then no more than 30 days um, after that, the county board must assign a, the, a committee to hear to hold a public hearing and review this process. In uh, generally speaking across the state, the Land Conservation Committee has been the committee that um, these petitions or public hearings have been held before. So it is my anticipation, uh, frankly, expectation that the county board would refer it to, to this committee. Um, with that said, uh, looking at timelines within 30 days, this committee would have to hold a public hearing regarding this topic. Uh, therefore, uh, it would be uh, to meet that requirement, uh, August 9th would be uh, the next committee meeting that where this public hearing would be held. Um, if not sooner, it'd be difficult to have it sooner due to the, the, the reality that there needs to be a class one notice um, and that class one notice, um, which would need to be uh, in the newspaper by July 27th to make it in time for our next PRD committee meeting of the 9th. And also uh, a class one notice must be mailed to all impacted parcels by the district, in this case, 921. So I've been in communication with Nick and Andrew as well uh, regarding that process. Um, and there, there may be the need for a contingency fund request uh, for some of those fees um, and, and expenses associated with that. Uh, within three months of that hearing, so uh, no later than October 19th, uh, this committee will have to report to the full county board. Um, technically, three months would be November 9th, but just the way the committee's uh, meetings line up, it would have to be by uh, the October 19th county board meeting. This committee would provide a report to it. And then within six months of that hearing date, so by February 9th of, of 2023, uh, a full county board must issue their order to establish the district or deny the district. Um, in this case, it would be no later than uh, January 18th in order to meet that required timeline. And then there is another 30 day uh, window for any aggrieved person may petition uh, for a review of that decision. So just a reminder that uh, we're going to for, I mean, guess, make every effort to, to do this in a timely fashion, but these are the, the drop dead deadlines uh, should that petition be submitted on the 15th. So you'll expect to see that uh, coming up soon. I would anticipate that um, the members, uh, individuals that are facilitating the petition would be present um, for that public hearing uh, and, and we will facilitate it in that matter. Uh, just a reminder that the Lake District is a a taxing authority district. Um, so I anticipate there to be some conversation regarding that. Um, but at this point in time, uh, the, the appears, um, the intention is that they have met their requirements to meet the 51% and there will be a petition submitted. So we'll be, uh, headed down that path for facilitating that and processing that. <clears throat> Thank you, Chase. Uh, Diane. Um, are there, are there, um, criteria for approval or denial in statute or elsewhere? So I think for all of us, this is a, a first first time event for uh, developing a district uh, with the exception of one lake district we have in the county over on Elk Creek Lake District, but that was developed many, many, many years ago. Um, I would say this would be the first time. So it'll be a, a, a process that we'll need to review the statute. And my understanding that the criteria is typically related to, have you met the, the 51%? Um, has there been um, a need demonstrated? And there's a few other criteria that I don't recall off the top of my head, but that will be uh, shared and presented. It's in statute. It's in uh, chapter uh, 33 of Wisconsin State Statutes, if you care to read that. <laughs> there is also some pretty good information on the Wisconsin Lakes uh, website through UW Stevens Point that has a really good outline of developing and understanding lake districts so we'll be refer referencing that as well as a statute as we go forward so question yeah so there's a lot of you know hoops and a lot of uh, timelines to get it approved but in time if they want to like you disband is it that hard to disband that taxing entity 
Um, I believe that the county board would have to disband it as an oh. official, uh, but certainly once the district is created, there is a board, a district board that would operate the district. So it wouldn't be operated by the county board. So if that district uh, board decides that they wanted to terminate the district, then I'm that would come back to county board for final approval. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Chase, I'm uh, going, uh, uh, is this, will this committee or the county have any role in uh, evaluating any of the practices that the district decides to uh, embrace? Uh, to some degree, so um, I have to get this, I have to look at this for, for details again, but uh, so the board that would be created for the district, the county board has authority for appointment of representation on that. It's either one from this committee or potentially two from, from the, this committee and the full county board. Uh, depending on what the number of uh, seats that that board uh, chooses to hold. So by statute, it's a minimum of five. Uh, there would be a representation from the town or the, the area, the municipality that has the greatest uh, valuation uh, within the district. So that basically it'd be Tainer Township. Um, there would be a county board appointment, uh, um, one or two. And then um, I think there's gotta be three, three others that are uh, members or live within the district themselves. It's my understanding, at least this was initially uh, communicated to me early on, that the the petitioners, uh, the people organizing the petition, may be interested in a seven-member board. Um, so I'd have to work through that to see if that increases county board's ability to appoint an additional member or not. Yeah. So at that point, yeah, okay, yeah. that's where the influence would be. Yeah. Um, and the purpose of the public hearing is to uh, to confirm that the the criteria of establishing the signatures and the and the that step of the process has been adequately completed. Or yeah. is it? Yeah. Yes, and okay. I think I'm certainly. Uh, I guess I'm certainly expecting, and I think there's the ability for a conversation about some of those other topics of the intention of the okay. district and okay. what ideas are there right now. Yep. Now, um, we may have community members here who have interest in this. I mean, to, without objection from the committee, would it be okay if we ask them if they had any comments or questions they wanted to ask? Mr. Lambers, I'm up here. A general. She should probably yeah, come up. Could you hear you on the, on the microphone? Sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good morning, uh, Dick Lamers. So I spoke at the public hearing that they started with, and um, then after that, in individual conversations with people that I've asked, uh, have they signed the petition? And their comment was yes. And I asked, you know, what did they tell you about taxing? And they said, oh, they said the government will pay for these projects. So in many cases, that's only two from my reference. But I guess I would like to question um, and somehow require that group of people to publish in a newspaper something to the effect of that specific requirement that it will become a taxing district um, and that whatever projects they deem is appropriate will be shared by those 931 parcels. And uh, to me, that was not clear in several instances, uh, so I would question that. I question the uh, validity of uh, the group and the projects that they've worked on in the past and what they've got proposed for the future, but I think that's something that the committee will have to review. 
uh, when we come to that, uh, if it does get approved. Uh, but right now there's real questions about the direction they're going and some of the significant costs that'll be uh, applied to those projects, specifically dredging. Um, when I've studied this issue for the last 15 years, the number one problem that we have in the watershed is the uh, blue-green algae and the impact on our lives and our health. And the projects they've done in the past have not been um, recommended by the DNR or other agencies that I've talked to. So I don't know how they're going to change that in the future or what they're going to recommend because when we talk about impacting the blue-green algae that is driven by waters that come into our watershed uh, in a greater, much greater proportion than anything they could do on the Lake District that is proposed. So I guess those are my comments for today. Thanks, sir. Any questions of me? It's okay. Anybody else have any comments? I do have some clarification yeah. on some yeah, of the cheers. questions okay. asked. So the decision uh, by the county board uh, is required to issue a decision based on these four findings, that the petition is signed by the requisite number of owners, that the district is necessary, that the public health, comfort, convenience, necessity, or public welfare will be promoted by the establishment of the district, and that the property included in the district will be benefited by the district's establishment. And then regarding uh, initial board of commissioners, so there will be three owners of land within the district appointed by the county board at least one of the property owners shall be a resident of the district um, so even though you might own land within the district at least one of those three must live within that district one member of the county land conservation committee or someone nominated by the county land conservation committee appointed by the county board and then one member appointed by the governing body of the town village or city having the largest assessed value property in the district um, so except for the commissioner from the land conservation committee and the commissioner from the town village or city so in this case the township the terms of these initial commissioners will expire at the first annual meeting of the district so in reality the county board has some pretty good some appointment authority in the majority of of the initial commissioners once the board of commissioners is established then there will be you know potential for some turnover there but there still would be right. a land conservation committee representative on there thank you I, I guess uh we would expect that whatever practices are are uh that they're do, that in most cases whatever practices are are uh, enacted would require it may require approval from the dnr to see that they met certain environmental standards that right so there's some checks and balances and opportunities both uh anyone else a question okay i miss anything on the agenda any announcements other than the july 28th field day Our next meeting would be the 26th. And with that, we're adjourned. Thank